If Batman doesn't return soon... I know. All bloody hell's gonna break loose. We should work together. He wanted to create the perfect soldier. I was the strongest of them all. I don't trust her. Because I wear this doesn't mean I'm a part of your cult. Call me Batwing. Batwing? That's original. We're just getting started. From here on, it's only family. Hi, this is Mark Morell from Toon Barn, and we're here at New York Comic Con 2015, and I'm here with Jay Oliva, the director of Batman Bad Blood, which is coming out in early 2016. Yes. So, I have a question. Okay. With the focus on family in this film, mm -hmm. how do the villains get a chance to get our attention? Oh, they get a lot of the attention. They're the main kind of antagonist of the story. They're the one who propels the whole reason why the Bat family comes together. So you'll see kind of the dysfunctional family that, that is the Bat family. But it's great because, you know, because of the power vacuum, once Batman is kind of taken out of the picture, we get to see, you know, characters like Nightwing and, and Damien and Batwing and Batwoman all come together to try to figure out what happened to him. Okay. Do the villains have a family? Uh, you, you'll have to watch and find out. I mean, I think, I think as a group, they, they, they function as a really odd family, but there are some kind of twists and turns that we have in the movie that will tie it into the, the, the Bat family that, that we've kind of introduced in Son of Batman and Batman vs. Robin. Okay. Uh, what villains do we have in this one? Uh, so we have Heretic, of course. Uh, we've got uh, Calculator. We've got uh, Electrocutioner, uh, Hellhound, and uh, geez, oh, uh, Firefly and Killer Moth and I and Tusk. And I think I'm missing somebody, but we've got a lot of villains. All right. How can we get more Batwoman and more Batgirl in these DC films? If this movie sells well, I think if this movie sells well, they'll they'll be like, hey, the public really likes you know Batwoman. I mean, for me, my personal goal was to make sure that Batwoman was most as badass as possible because uh, I wanted the the fans to love her, so that way I can do more films with her because I I love the actress Yvonne Strahovski. She's great. I've always wanted to work with her, so so getting her to be Batwoman was great, and she had a good time you know being the voice. And I asked her, I was like, did you want to do more? Like, I'd love to, so hopefully, again, it, uh, this is all dependent on how th well these movies sell. All right, well, we're looking forward to seeing it in early 2016, and thank you for joining us on Toon Barn. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Right. I was there the night Batman died. Batman disappears uh, early on in the film, and because of that, he, he leaves this void, you know, I mean, who can replace the Cape Crusader? Batman, we need you. To begin with, it's it's a Nightwing story. I've struggled for years to get out of Bruce's shadow. And the last thing I want is to be wearing this damn thing. And of course, uh, Sean Mayer comes back as Nightwing. And a lot of uh, the main story is driven through kind of his POV. Got a family emergency. Now that uh, you know Batman is gone, he has to fill that role and also investigate where uh, what happened to Batman, which brings him into contact with uh, Batwoman. It's actually the, our first time introducing this character, at least in the animated universe. Kate Kane, aka Batwoman, is played by Yvonne Strahovski, and uh, she was the last person to see Batman, and so her investigation of trying to figure out what happened to Batman leads her to run into Nightwing, and thus they, they join forces into this kind of, uh, you know, collected kind of investigation. If you're serious about hunting them down, then we should work together. Batwoman doesn't really have qualms against using guns. There's a point in our film where Batman even, you know, calls her out. He's like, you know, I don't like anybody who uses guns. And using a gun makes you just like them. And she's like, deal with it. I can handle this on my own. Heretic's crew isn't just a bunch of, like, you know, goons who, you know, just have guns. Like, they've all got special powers, like electrocutioners, got electricity's kind of force of nature that is actually quite overpowered and trying to see our characters trying to deal with that and realize that, you know, just dealing with one of these villains is enough, but now dealing with a whole team of them, it, the stakes are way higher than they've ever thought of. And even if Batman was there, I think they'd have a pretty hard time to, to even handle them. So now we see these three characters against like a crew of eight and, and a lot of destruction, a lot of kind of uh, action that, that we normally see in our films, uh, but it comes like kind of tenfold. 
A lot of action sequences, whether it's a chase sequence involving vehicles to like hand to hand fighting to gunplay. I mean, this movie's got it all. It's got, it's got, I think this is the closest thing that we have maybe to like a James Bond mystery, I think, out of anything. It's, it's kind of got this kind of spy thriller t uh, uh, kind of feel to it, and it's kind of fun in that way. I think the the fans will get a kick out of everything because uh, again, it's I'm tr I'm a fan too, so I try to create things that like in my head, like what would I want to see.